let's go back to our roadmap and uh, look at the next topic that we'll be covering. Uh, we're going to focus next on integers and floats, the representation of numbers in, uh, in memory. That's going to be an important precursor before we can um, look at all the instructions for manipulating uh, data values. So this section is going to cover the representation of integers, both uh, signed and unsigned, and how we treat integers in C. Uh, talk about some shifting and sign extension operations uh, that will be important for arithmetic. And uh, then we'll close with a section on floating point numbers. Uh, basically, how do we represent binary numbers uh, that are fractions uh, rather than just integers? And then we'll get into a little bit of detail on the IEEE floating point standard for floating point numbers and how we do floating point operations and the rounding that they entail as well as look at floating point numbers and see. There's a lot more to floating point numbers and uh, we will leave a lot of those topics uh, to the text to cover, uh, but we will do some of the basics. But before we get to integers, I just wanted to talk about uh, encoding problems in general. So suppose we have a 52 card uh, deck, a, you know, the typical playing card uh, setup with 13 cards of each suit, uh, organized into four different suits. Uh, and we, we want to figure out how to represent these in uh, binary numbers. How do we use zeros and ones to represent uh, all these cards? Well, we could start uh, by thinking about uh, the operations we want to be able to do on the card. So we probably want to be able to tell if a card is higher than another or if they're the same suit. That might help us think about the kind of encoding we have. Let's take a look at some examples. So here's a very simple encoding to start with. We have 52 different cards, so let's use 52 different bits with the bit corresponding to the card uh, that we have set to 1. So that would let us use 52 bits of a 64-bit word, let's say, in what's called a one-hot encoding. And meaning that there's only going to be one bit set to one, all the others will be set to zero. So we can have the first bit represent, uh, let's say, the ace of, of uh, clubs, okay? And the next bit represent the two of clubs and so on. What are some of the drawbacks of this? Well, it's going to be really hard to compare values and suits because we have individual bits uh, throughout those 52 uh, where we have to look at the val uh, for the value and suit of the card. And we have sure have a large number of bits to represent one card, an entire 64-bit word. This is called a one-hot encoding where only one bit is on. Uh, another possibility is to do a two-hot encoding where we might use four bits to represent the suit and another 13 bits to represent the 13 possible values of the card. So now two bits would be set to one. So the, f the first bit in the suit might be set to indicate uh, the suit clubs, and the, n the first bit in the value might be set to indicate an ace. Okay, so now it's a lot easier to tell if two cards are the same suit because they'll have the same four bits here. And we can tell if a card is greater than another by looking at the position of the one in the remaining 13 bits. But that's still a bit cumbersome. It's easier to compare suits and values, but it's still a large number of bits, uh, in this case 17. This is what's called a two-hot encoding now because we have two bits set to one for each card. Let's continue with this exercise and look at two possibly better representations. We could just do a binary encoding of all 52 cards. We only need six bits to represent 64 different numbers, so we can take care of 52 in just six bits. That would allow us to fit a card into just a byte and use the low order six bits uh, to do that. So that's kind of nice. It all fits in one byte. Uh, and it's much smaller than the one or two hot encoding. But how can we make the value comparisons easier, uh, the suit comparisons easier? Uh, we're still going to have all the cards numbered from one to, 50, uh, from one to 52, and that will not make it easy to do those comparisons. Uh, so we can do something that's a bit of a hybrid. We can use two bits for the suit, four bits for the value. Two bits for the suit because we have four possible suits. 
So we need four possible binary bit patterns here, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And then four bits for the value, because the card can be anything from an ace to a king, 13 different values. Okay, so this makes it now easy to still do that suit comparison uh, and just check if a number is smaller or greater than another to for the value. Okay, so let's take a look at how we would implement these operations if we were doing it in, uh, in C. So if we wanted to check if two cards are of the same suit, what we would do is have uh, two bytes representing each card, okay? Maybe an array to represent uh, a five card hand. We would take two cards out of the hand and ask if they're the same suit. And this function, same suit P, uh, is implemented here below. It returns a Boolean value, just zero or one, and takes the two cards as uh, arguments. What it does, you'll notice, is it takes the first card and does a bitwise AND with the suit mask. What is the suit mask? The suit mask is a special value set to hex 3-0. Why hex 3-0? Well, that corresponds to 0011-0000. You'll notice that when we do a bitwise AND with this mask, we will only have non-zero results for these two bits. All the other bits will necessarily be zero because we have a zero here, and zero anded with anything will result in a zero. So this will essentially extract the value of the suit from the card representation. It will only have a non-zero value possibly in these two bits. Okay, so then we can do an exclusive or with the suit of the other card, okay? And why do we do an exclusive or? Well, remember an exclusive or says either one is true or the other is true, but not both, okay? So we would only get a perfect zero result if these two suits matched exactly. In other words, they had the same zeros and ones in these two locations. If they have that, then the result will be all zeros. And that's a Boolean false. And by taking the complement of it logically, we can turn, we can say uh, then that th those two cards match, that our result is true. Okay? So what we actually implemented here was the opposite of the XOR by using the not. In other words, we said rather are the two uh, suits different bits. We we're asking, are they the same bits, by just doing the complement of the XOR. All right? That would have been the same as saying this using the equals equals Boolean operator that says these two things exactly match. I just showed you what we can do with the Boolean operators. All right? Let's take a look now at comparing the values of two cards. Again, we have our array of five cards, our hand, and we compare uh, two cards card one and card two. So which has the greater value? Is card one a greater value than card two? So you'll notice here what we're going to do is apply a different mask to the card. This mask is value zero F, the value mask. It has a one in the low order four bits. So we're getting four, the low order four bits which represent the value and zeroing the suit. And the way we get the suit zeroed is by applying the logical AND with a mask that has zeros in these positions. So now the result will necessarily be zero there. And if we compare one of those extracted values to the other, we can simply uh, get the greater uh, relationship between the two. 